so I'm not going to go. And you can just go like that. And you can, if you want to see the dog, that's fine. But just try and keep it there. Uh, <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to worship at All Saints in Big Sky on this lovely, if smoky, summer morning. I welcome you here. It is good to gather in person, and we are also glad that others in our congregation can join us via Zoom. So especially when we get to the time of sharing the peace, feel free to come by the camera and wave a sign of peace to those people that are joining us virtually today. If you uh, open your bulletin, you'll see the insert that we are putting in our bulletin these days. During this time of COVID-19 spread, we have created a set of protocols, how we can best love our neighbor during this time of COVID. And we ask you to look at those if you haven't before. And we're also asking everyone at every service to leave a name and contact information in the offering basket by the ushers, just in case there would be need for contact tracing. So thank you for doing that. A couple of exciting announcements for this coming week. Um, on Saturday, one of our members, Muriel Walker, is going to host an, a virtual movie showing of the documentary 13th. 13th talks about the history of the 13th Amendment and um, is a really remarkable film. She is going to host that showing online and then there will be a chance for discussion afterwards. So if you are interested in seeing that and perhaps discussing it with other congregation members, you can look for that link in this week's or next week's Friday news, or you can always send me an email if you can't find that Zoom link. And then next Sunday, a week from today, our congregation has made a team for the Gallatin River Task Force for the weekend cleanup. And so we have been assigned a stretch of road by the river, and we are looking for volunteers. 
it's quite a stretch. So there's lots of space for social distancing. So you don't have to worry about being too close to somebody. But um, if you can give uh, an hour or a few hours of time, we're going to meet on Sunday afternoon, sometime between one and four, and spread out along that stretch and try to clean up what we can. Um, but uh, we, most of us, I think, uh, love the Gallatin River and we wanna keep that river and the area around it as clean as possible. So if you have time to volunteer, we'd love to have your help. So please send your name to me. We do need to fill out volunteer forms for the Gallatin Valley Task Force. So I'll send you a volunteer form to fill out. And uh, finally, um, we have many people and situations to pray for today, but just to add to those prayers, uh, many of the people around the country, especially many people that you know and love in California and in other parts of the West who are being affected by the fires. Um, I've heard already multiple situations this week of family members and friends who are being evacuated or who are fearing evacuation. And of course, we keep in our prayers the firefighters and all of those who put their lives in danger to help contain these fires. So please uh, keep, keep them all in your prayers as we also pray for rain. Let's take a moment to prepare ourselves to worship God this morning. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. God is the rock of our salvation. O oh, come, let us worship. Great one. 
Join me in speaking the psalm responsibly. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high and cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. We hear our first reading. A reading from Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thank you to God. Um, please join me in speaking responsibly the canticle. Strike up the instruments, a song to my God with timbrels, chant to the Lord with cymbals, sing to the Lord a new song, exalt and exclaim God's name. Let your every creature serve you, for you spoke and they were made. You sent forth your spirit, and they were created. No one can resist your word. The mountains to their bases, and the seas are shaken. The rocks like wax melt before your glance. But to those who fear you, you are very A reading from Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living, living sacrifice, whole and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, 
so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, 
but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Haiti will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. In our first reading, the prophet Isaiah speaks to a people in exile. We hear about exile in the Bible, but do we have any idea what that really means? What would it be like to have your capital city utterly destroyed and your holy and beloved temple demolished? What would it be like to have the best and the brightest of your community forcibly marched away to Babylon so that there would be no brains or brawn left to organize an opposition army? What would it be like to be dragged yourself to live in a foreign land as captives? dragged away wearing your shame. I think that most of us here have no idea what it would be like to be in exile. Now, some of our neighbors, some of our neighbors here in Montana and across our country may know better. The First Peoples of the United States, those First Peoples, those tribes had their land wheedled and treated away from them or stolen right out under their feet, often in the name of Jesus. And many of their descendants still live on land that was not chosen but assigned to them whether they liked it or not. And then of course, there are all of our African American neighbors whose ancestors were dragged here on slave ships to be bought and sold for dollars and cents. I am sure that these neighbors of ours carry the pain of their ancestors still in their bones. That longing for comfort, that feeling of living in exile. Now I cannot, I cannot really imagine what it is like to live in exile, but in a strange, a different way, this time period of COVID-19 has thrown our entire world into a kind of exile. We have been tugged away, dragged away sometimes from our comfortable and controlled patterns of life. We have been pulled at least six feet from one another. And I keep thinking about all the children who will go to school this fall and be told again and again and again to keep 
their distance. Even though we know that sometimes the only way to comfort a child is to touch them, to hug them. We are exiled from basic forms of interaction during this time. It's not exile, let's be clear. But still, we long, like exiled peoples, to return to the lives that we were living just six months ago. To an ancient people who lived in exile, but also to us in this strange world that we are living in right now, Isaiah speaks in our first reading. Isaiah speaks a word from the Lord of advice and comfort. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to the rock. Look to the quarry. What does Isaiah mean by this? Well, the next line gives us a clue. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. In other words, look to your ancestors. Look to your ancestors in the flesh, but also your ancestors in the faith. Look to those who came before you. Look to those upon whose shoulders we stand. Look to the ones who suffered sometimes deeply and were asked to trust in God's impossible promises and somehow through trials and tribulations kept the faith in their bodies and their hearts so that they passed on those stories of faith from generation to generation to generation down to our grandfathers and grandmothers so that we too might trust in God. Look to the rock from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, look to Sarah. The prophet Isaiah is talking to us this morning. Abraham and Sarah are our ancestors in faith. Even though we are removed from them by thousands of years and miles, still Abraham and Sarah belong to us or, or rather we belong to them because we have been adopted into their family. We are the branch of their lineage, the ones who confess Jesus as the Messiah, the son of the living God, the anointed one, the one who binds us to one another in the body of Christ, the one who looses us from our sins in forgiveness. Still, Abraham and Sarah are our foreparents, our ancestors in the faith. Abraham, who stood under the sky bursting with stars and came so close to God, and God came so close to him. Abraham and Sarah, who were called by God to leave everything that they knew, everyone that they knew, to journey for many years through wilderness to find a new home. Abraham and Sarah, who had to wait and wait and wait for God's promise finally to be fulfilled, when finally, way past the point that it was possible, Sarah gave birth to a child and they had to name him Laughter in Hebrew, Isaac. Look to the rock, look to the quarry. Look to the quarry from which we were dug. We have so many other shared ancestors in the faith, <clears throat> famous and not so famous saints. There are great stories. They, some of them fasted on desert pinnacles, some of them founded monastic communities, some of them buried hundreds during the Middle Ages plagues. 
Some of them taught children to read. Some of them worked to end slavery. Some of them advocated for tribal communities in this nation. We have so many shared ancestors in the faith, but do we know them? Do we know their stories? Do we know the stories of these people who clung to the rock of faith, the rock that is Christ? I know there is a lot that I still need to learn about. And so I have to say, I've been grateful for the last number of months. A few of us have been meeting virtually on Friday mornings to pray morning prayer. And each time we look up who is commemorated on the Episcopal calendar of saints. And there is almost always someone. <laughs> and often I do not know who that person is. And so we learn, we learn together about someone, some person, some ancestor in the faith that we commemorate. Just last week, I learned about Jonathan Myrick Daniels. Maybe some of you know this name, but I didn't. He was an Episcopal seminarian. He was born in the 1940s and, and felt the call to seminary. And while he was in seminary, began to work on behalf of those who did not have the rights that he had. He worked to register black voters after the Voting Rights Act of 65 was passed. He worked in person to integrate public areas in the South. He marched in Selma. And then when he was 26 years old, he used his body to shield a 17-year-old black girl from a gunshot and died. And we remember him now as one of the many, many saints. And we, thanks, we thank God for, for him who is a piece of that rock, a saint who is dug from the same quarry that we are. And then of course, we all have our own particular saints, right? Our personal ones, the ones known only to us, the ancestors that might even be our biological ancestors. And I think of my maternal grandmother who helped me learn the books of the Old Testament by heart. Thanks to her, I know them. And left this recipe for a crumb coffee cake, which tells us to beat the batter the amount of time it takes to sing two verses of a hymn. That says a lot right there. And then my paternal grandfather, who was a Missouri Synod Lutheran pastor and worked at a time when it was, when it was hard for those who had less power and less equity in the Midwestern communities where he served. And mostly I remember him fishing on a boat in the lake. But I also remember him preaching sometimes with strength and conviction. And it really doesn't seem to matter that I don't remember a single word. <laughs> Still, he was passing on the faith. And I wonder who those people are for you. I bet in our little gathering this morning, we have such a list, such a list of our own saints, relatives or church ladies or camp counselors or AA sponsors, people in our lives who taught us, fed us the faith, sometimes without our even knowing it. Look to the rock from which you were hewn. Look to the quarry from which you were dug. We are all here, my sisters and brothers, worshiping because of the prayers and the confessions and the gifts of our ancestors in the faith. And we look to them and remember that they belong to us, or rather we belong to them. 
We look to them who confessed that the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob carried them through their troubles, sometimes even through exile. And so we, we can be strengthened and say, surely, surely that same God will carry us as well. Even when we are feeling that we are rocking on choppy COVID waters. After all, faith, faith is our raft. And that raft can seem really shaky sometimes. The water splashes all around and sometimes we fear for our lives. And yet that raft that held our ancestors in the faith, it still floats. And the very one, the one who stills the storms and calms the waves has made room for all of us on that raft of faith. And maybe it is more than a raft. Maybe it is a boat. Maybe it is an ark. And we are held up by it. One final thing. When we look to the rock from which we are hewn, when we look to the quarry from which we were dug, we can begin to understand and maybe even embrace those words of St. Paul in the letter to the Romans. The words that tell us that we, we the church, are the body of Christ. That each of us are members of that one body and that each of us have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Look around you. From the littlest ones of us to the oldest, all of us have been given gifts. And perhaps you know your gift well. Or perhaps you need your neighbor to help you identify that gift. Or perhaps your neighbor needs your help. And this, this is really what it means to be the church, to help identify these God-given gifts, to identify our own, these gifts that God gives to us in each stage of our life, and even in times of exile. Amen. <clears throat> Together we confess the faith. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son of God.
Oh. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon the earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Created us clean hearts, O God. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such a blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, 
that may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. Bless the church that despite hardships, Christians around the globe will stand firm on the rock. Who is Christ? Support bishops, priests, pastors, deacons, and congregational committees during this time. Lord, in your mercy. Bless the leaders of nations that they govern their people with integrity and attend to the needs of the poor and the vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. bless our various means of communications, our phones, the internet, our postal service, and delivery businesses, that our communities remain connected and our relationships be sustained. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. bless students that in class or at home, that they be kept safe and able to learn. Uphold teachers, staff, administrators and families and protect all who are affected by the opening of schools. Lord in your mercy, yeah. bless all who are in need, all who have tested positive for the virus, the sick and the dying. We pray for the unemployed, for medical workers, for those seeking a vaccine, for those who are overwhelmed with anxiety about the future. Lord in your mercy, Amen. Bless those on our prayer list with your presence. Kaya, Robbie, Mike, Linda, Bill, Carol, Bob, Bill, Oscar, Gus, Robert, Dorothea, Noni, Pete, Ginger, Kristen, Margot, Rob, Melissa, Stuart, Past, Stephanie, Christopher, Stan, 
Maximilian, Daniela, Isabella, Acre, Lauren, Audrey, Karen, Jill, Bob, and the Peterson Franco family. Lord, in your mercy. We also ask you, Lord, to watch over the people in California with all the fires. Please watch over the animals that could be trapped, the livestock that needs to be moved, the people that have lost their houses. Lord, in your mercy. Let us together pray the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we you humbly service, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your measure of love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace, for the hope of glory, and we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that we are truly thankful for us. We may show more grace, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness of our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. Amen. Amen.